In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a bass stab like this. I'm Philip from Tucson Music, and in my opinion, bass dabs are some of the most fun sounds to design. They're often the largest feeling component of a track, and so you can get really creative with the full frequency spectrum of the sound and just make something completely over the top. I'm gonna walk through just one specific bass dab here, but once you see the thought process and the steps behind it, I'm sure you'll have a million ideas for how to create something crazy for your own tracks. Let's dive into it. All right, so here we are in FL, and let's go ahead and solo this stab so you can get an idea of what we're working with. So a big portion of this sound is gonna be all these effects right here on the mixer channel. Let me mute these so you can hear what it sounds like without them. So lots of work being done by these effects. Let's open up phase plant and see what's going on in here. I'm gonna turn off these effects here as well so you can hear the foundation of the sound. And just to really drive the point home, I'm gonna turn off these automation clips here too so you can get an idea of just how simple the core of the sound is. So that's really it. It's just these two triangle oscillators detuned against each other. As you can see, these aren't really uh, triangles. I took the wavetable uh, set from Serum, the basic mini set, and put it into Faceplant. So uh, yeah, I just like the way these oscillators sound. The one component that's adding a bit of complexity already within these oscillators is the pitch here. I've connected the macro and I'm just moving the pitch up and down just a little bit. So it goes from 0.6 to 0.3. And what this does is it creates this kind of wobble effect as the overlap between the different phases of the triangle waves uh, play against each other. So to show you what this is doing, let me just manually move this up and down as I play a note. So I thought it'd be cool to automate that and create this kind of evolving wobble to the whole sound. So here's what it sounds like with the automation. The first thing I did with the effects on phase plant was use this phase distortion. So here it is with this on. Clearly a much different sound now. What I like with this phase distortion unit is just how it completely shifts the tonality to something unnatural and it kind of gives this harder kind of more solid energy to the sound. Then we have these two comb filters here and it's kind of the same story as with the phase distortion. So I really was just looking to push the tonality somewhere unique. Um, I didn't have like a set kind of frequency that I knew I was gonna put these on. Uh, I was just moving these around, both of these frequencies here and until I found something that just resonated with me. Um, then also the second one here, I just put the stereo on here. So this is like the first little stage of getting a little bit of stereo to the sound as well. Next here we have slice EQ. Um, this is just EQing and I really wanted to add a little bit of depth back into the sound since the phase distortion and the comb filters kind of made it sound hollow. Um, so I'm just dipping the mids here and then I'm just boosting a little bit of the low end here and here's what it sounds like now. Next up here we have Faturator and this is just a distortion unit. Um, it's a more typical distortion as opposed to the phase distortion from before, um, but it's just a nice style of it and there's not much to explain with distortion. I'll just show you what it sounds like. This is where the sound starts getting a little more exciting and coming alive. Then next up we have another slice EQ and my goal here was to add a bit of movement to the sound and so I just added some nodes, kind of went crazy with um, the peak nodes here and I just put things in a way that I knew would sound cool if they were automated. And so what I'm doing is I'm automating this offset here and so you can see this kind of interesting sweep that's going to happen. So let me show you that within the um, automation now. 
Just has this more interesting movement to the whole sound as it plays through. Next we have another distortion unit and this one is just another layer of this sort of crunch kind of feel. And it's also interacting with the movement behind this EQ to create some interesting harmonics. It's on the foldback setting, which can sometimes be a little bit more of an extreme distortion setting. Um, and then the drive here is being modulated by this LFO. And the point of this is to kind of give this choppy pulse kind of effect for the distortion and the sound overall. It just gives this little bit of a hint of a like mangled kind of vibe. So let me first show you what it sounds like without the LFO. And then with. Has this interesting bit of top end to it now. So that covers it for all the face plant settings here. Um, next, let's move on to the effects within FL Studio. So first up, there's Pro Q here. Uh, I'm first cutting off any kind of rumble stuff that's coming through from face plant. And that's going to help clean the signal up for OTT over here and for trash so that these can work more consistently. Then there's also this pretty extreme uh, mid-range boost and I'm pushing it like 9 dBs here. And the point of this is to add an interesting kind of tonality to go into OTT and trash here. Let me turn these two on and just show you exactly what I'm talking about um, with and without this uh, bump right here. So without. <laughs> And then with. So whenever you have a distortion unit like Trash and an extreme kind of multiband compressor like OTT, the way you push frequencies into those units can really change up how they react to the sound. Next, let me show you uh, with and without OTT here. So without. And then with. So not the biggest difference, but I like how it's adding this extra bit of sharpness and density to the sound. Um, we're just kind of bringing down the variability of the volume so that we can push a nice, consistent, solid signal into trash here, uh, which is the next distortion unit. So with trash here, I wanted to finalize the main essence of the sound, and I wanted to push it to be as aggressive as possible and really exaggerate the top end crunch of things. And I was just exploring presets here. I just picked them at random and landed on this one. So here it is. I love that the top end crunch kind of has this metallic-y kind of vibe to it now. Next up is another Pro Q. Um, whenever I add a distortion unit, I always make sure to cut away the rumble that it's potentially adding, uh, especially ones like Trash. And then with these nodes here, um, this is pretty specific for this track. I'm just kind of balancing this sound to fit in a little better. Next up is Crystallizer, and this is gonna add this extra shimmer and complexity to the sound. So let me go ahead and exaggerate the mix here as I play this, so. As you can see with this automation clip right here, I'm taking down the mix of Crystallizer. It's going from 25 down to zero. And the point of that is to add this initial impact of complexity and richness to the sound, but then not to let the sound get lost and drowned out by the crystallizer effect. So with the automation. Next up is gem mod, and this is just adding a touch of width to it. This is a chorus effect. Um, Nothing too special going on here. Let me just play this off and on. Just a little extra thickness there. Then we have a hollow room. Uh, this is just reverb and there's not much to explain with that. We're just adding a bit of space and making the sound feel more natural within the mix. Then here we have LFO tool, and this is just sidechain ducking for the kick. Um, again, nothing too special, but I'll go ahead and play that. And 
And then there's one final important detail here, which is this automation clip. This is bringing the sound down one semitone and then back up to the default pitch. And so this is what kind of brings the sound alive and makes it feel like it's a horn from like a cinematic trailer. And with that final piece of the puzzle in place, let's go ahead and hear the sound in context now. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you want to grab this sound and mess with it on your own, then I'll make sure to leave a link for it down below. As always, a thumbs up on the video is greatly appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up with more sound design and production videos. You can also grab a ton of other patches for Faceplant from my preset pack called Decadent. I worked really hard to make a bunch of cool sounds for techno and other aggressive genres. Plus, there's a free demo pack if you want to just try it out. So make sure to check those out if you want to get some inspiration for your next track and then let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to dive deeper on in future videos or feel free to share any tips you have for bass stabs and how to make them special but that wraps it up for this one catch you guys next time peace